Grace and peace to you, my siblings in Christ. Every year, my family tries to go to God's country, also known as New Mexico, to enjoy the high desert with its sense of silver sage and its starlit skies above and its aspen-covered hills. We typically spend a week at Philmont Scout Ranch, just outside the small town of Cimarron, located in Colfax County in the northeast corner of the state. This place is well and truly in our blood now, and I think it's safe to say that we adore this land. In fact, you've probably noticed my shiny Philmont belt buckle and leather belt that I wear every single day. Just a few years ago, as part of an annual retreat of sorts, a certain breed of scouting volunteer known as a commissioner uh, would go and, and we would experience this beautiful place together. And I got to witness something truly spectacular unfold before me. In fact, just the thought of it brings a tingle up my spine. From the top of the ridge of this little tiny outpost called Rayado, my friends Karen and Sean and I developed what has become the definition of what it means to be a commissioner in scouting. As members of the National Commissioner Service Team, we were asked to define our culture. And in a joyous moment of clarity, with lumps in our throats and tears in our eyes, glad tears, we devised this simple yet impactful statement of what it means to be a commissioner. Be the heart, build relationships, change lives. Commissioners, that is, scouting volunteers who are commissioned or officially charged with a specific duty, work directly with communities, with troops and PACs. They help out where needed, they point scouts and adult volunteers to resources, and they serve as seasoned veterans of the scouting movement. In short, commissioners exist to help every single scout become engaged citizens who strengthen our communities, our nation, and our world. Now I want you to hold on to this word commission as we move forward this evening, for we are all commissioned in some sense as members of the body of Christ, the church. This evening, as you know, we celebrate the ascension of Jesus following his appearance to the disciples after his death and resurrection on that first Easter morning. Luke tells us that after many convincing proofs, Jesus' disciples rejoiced at his presence before them and listened as he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Jesus showed his disciples that what had been written was now a reality, a reality in the saving power of his name. In fact, Jesus says, Repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in my name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. This understanding the disciples had was not simply from having read the scriptures or from attending synagogue or Torah school, Beit Midrash. Jesus tells them, you are witnesses of these things. This goes beyond understanding to embodiment. The disciples are now seasoned veterans of Jesus' ministry movement in Galilee and the Decapolis, in Samaria and throughout Palestine. These fishermen and zealots and tax collectors and ragtag bunch have been witnesses to Jesus' saving action in the lives of Jews and non-Jews alike. And see, says Jesus, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Now, Jesus' use of the word sending is, is crucial here. It's of utmost importance. For Jesus is about to transform the lives of these disciples in ways they could not have ever imagined. In just a short time, the Spirit will fall upon the disciples so that they may go out into the world and continue the ministry that Jesus started here on earth. Then after saying these words, Jesus took the disciples to Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. Now Jesus departs from this earth, his hands held aloft, continually blessing the disciples and the work that they have been sent to do. 
Talk about a roller coaster ride these disciples have been on for the past few days, right? Their rabbi, their master, had been tortured and killed and laid in a tomb. And then he rose from the dead and he ate and he communed with them again. And now he says, it's your turn. And he ascends to heaven while giving the disciples his eternal blessing. Wow. So what does this mean for us in the 21st century? We know that the risen Jesus has not been with us in a physical sense for over 2,000 years. Yet the work of the church carries on day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Jesus' ministry shines still today, through his, though his physical body no longer remains among us. Yes, the work of Jesus shines forth every day in his church. And I mean not only this lovely building, but the community that is the Church Catholic, the Church Universal. The work of Jesus shines forth in the ministry that each of us shares within our respective communities, in soup kitchens, food pantries, clothing distribution centers, medical clinics, schools, and libraries, and the list goes on and on and on. When we say, yes, Jesus Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, then we must accept our individual call, our calls, our sending, our commissioning. For each of us is truly called to our own vocations in this life. We are made whole through the saving power of Christ Jesus. We are sent out into the world to continue Jesus' ministry, and we are eternally blessed by Jesus in the good work we do each day for our neighbor. In Jesus' ascension, room is made on this earth for the body of Christ, the church, to get down to business and serve the needs of the many for the benefit of the whole. We are called to be the church. We are sent and blessed by Jesus to be his hands, his feet, and his heart to those around us. Each one of us here this evening is called and commissioned by Jesus to be the heart. Jesus tells us to love one another just as he loves us. Loving one another means feeding them and clothing them, supporting them in times of need, rejoicing with them, laughing with them, crying with them. Each one of us here this evening is called and commissioned to build relationships. Jesus tells us to make disciples throughout the world, not just within the walls of our church building, but outside those doors. How many people out there are hungry for a simple greeting? How many haven't heard about Jesus' love for all? Who needs to hear that Jesus, through Jesus, we are forgiven and made whole? Each one of us here this evening is called and commissioned to change lives. As members of the body of Christ, the church, we have the power to impact the lives of so many in our own communities, but also in the greater world. As engaged citizens of the church, there is no limit to the positive change that we can bring about in the lives of countless children of God. Though Jesus may not be with us in a physical way, we are called to be his body. That is the work of the church, and that is our commission. Amen.